Welcome back, Mind Your Biz audience. My name is Seth. You're watching Mind Your Biz. And in today's episode, in lieu of our typical creator highlight series, I'm bringing back somebody who's been uh, a, a great guest in the past. You've asked to hear more about this project. And I think we threatened to talk about Charlie from the Raptorian Project as well, or talk to Charlie from the Raptorian Project as well. We weren't able to, but it's Big Piggy, a.k.a. David Morris. David, welcome back to Mind Your Biz. Thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be back, Seth. Um, lovely to be here again. Uh, a lot of things have changed since I th think it was back in 2018, 2019. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been a little time. Uh, it, it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm so glad we were able to make time for this. I know that it's for the time zone difference. It's it's more of a sacrifice for you to be up this time uh, of day than it is for me. Nah, so what one o'clock is normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I and I in any case, I'm just happy you were able to make the time. I know that we had yeah. some other guests who were in a similar time zone who asked me instead to like give up my part of my Sunday with my family and such. And you know, so thank yeah. you for, for taking the hit on, on your side of the, the clock. But yeah. let's Let's just tell the audience really fast. We yeah. we had um like the I think that the starter the the seed for this meetup and for the, for this content was not actually just Raptorium, um, which we'll get to in a minute. But it was yeah. a more fundamental issue than that. It was uh, something along the lines of this, like yeah. make this fundamental problems with DeFi and Web three. And yeah. you kind of you threw something at me like so much spaghetti at the wall to see if you know to see if it would stick. You were like, hey, you know what? Yeah. We could talk about things that are that most people aren't really looking at. And that's what I appreciate about your genius, Dave, is that you see targets, you're able to hit targets that other people don't even know they should be looking toward. So the moment you suggested this, I thought, yeah, okay, we should we should carve out some time for this more esoteric uh, topic. It seems esoteric now. Yeah. It won't so, it won't seem so in a couple months. It, it, it's not so esoteric, really. Uh, it's just if you've been around the space for long enough, um, you've seen that basically things have evolved in a more psychological than logical fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that as well. That as well. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, contracts and DeFi and all of this, it, it all comes back to 2013, 2014, um, ousting of Gavin from Bitcoin Core and a lot of Bitcoin people feeling a little bit touchy because Gavin had been effectively running the show for a while. Yeah. Um, and then uh, a couple of alternative use cases came up for Bitcoin, which uh, caused more of a rift in the overall crypto community than what is really commonly known. Um, there were different proposals uh, from Counterparty was one. They started using Opchexic Multisig, which is a data field in a Bitcoin transaction, to store smart contracts that would execute across the chain. Um, Vitalik Buterin suggested uh, utilizing op return for contracts and had a couple of proposals rejected, which I believe were one of the main motivators in the Ethereum project happening. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so for my part, I was definitely an outsider during that time. I heard a bit about this from a couple of family members of mine who were uh, at that time, they were developing multi-coin mining pools. And um, and so I heard a little bit about this. It was kind of like, all right, like well, I got the gossip from right, so so to speak, from people who were who were closer to being insiders than I was at that time. Um, but to your point, all of this is a matter of public record. None of this was hidden. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. out there in chat logs and yeah, and in forums. Yeah, and no, I mean, it, it's all over the place. Um, if if they're still up and running, Bitcoin talk <laughs> can still be a source of. A lot of yeah, odd little bits and pieces from the past that oh, yeah. rear their that rear their head. But um, I can't help thinking that every time we have another billion dollar defy hack or hundred mil or whatever it is today, 
it might only be 20 mil today, but it's going to be 100 mil again tomorrow. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, it does I, seem like I can't, a bit of shaking can't, around. Can't help thinking of how some of this, these earlier proposals are actually a lot more secure than what's being used now. Yeah. So let's let's uh, let's unpack that in just a minute. But let's jump back a little bit and, uh, and let's introduce for Mind Your Business audience, for any member of the audience that doesn't know you and doesn't know the Raptorium uh -huh. project. Yeah. Can you can you give my yeah. audience a thirty yeah. second like nutshell overview of who is Big Piggy? AKA David Morris, and what is Raptorium? I'm David Owen Morris. I've been in crypto since 2009, 2010, more seriously, um, in different capacities, mainly as a very high level user. Um, I run the RTM projects, day to day operations on the business side and uh, supervise some of the development. Um, we have uh, egalitarian proof of work, um, which makes it easy to participate in. We're a CPU mineable coin. We plan on offering scaling via transaction decoupling from the main chain um, onto side chains or parachains not quite like anything else that's out there, but sort of like a com combination of a polka dot side chain and a Komodo side chain, if you could call it that. That'll run on our collateralized nodes, which also provide security for our proof of work chain. Okay. And no. um, it's a good little project. Things have been a little bit slower in some ways than what we expected. Other things have been faster. Um, we've had a few ups and downs. But overall, we're making progress. And we've got a couple of milestones out, even to the point of where what we're talking about today. Um, we've got another project building on RTM. And I'm consulting for them. And that's mainly what we're here to talk about today is DeFi or Web3 applications that aren't necessarily on um, Ethereum or EVM chains and what yeah. can be done there. Awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate the overview there. And the audience, you just saw the link over on the screen, but it's in the description as well. Please do check that out and please do be sure that you follow Raptorium across social media because there are updates that are issued there and you can interact with the community and see what that's all about as far as how the fans that have been won over to the Raptorian community, they, they were won based on that merit, right? Not just, uh, not just, uh, not just merit based proof of work, but, uh, but that tends yeah, to, but, uh, I mean, we, we, we are doing an awful lot of innovation. I mean, we've been running mainnet now for coming close to two years, but we've got a very strong community. We've got pools similar to our own version of Monero Ocean set up. We've got um, to to basically compete in the market. And we've got people who are building DeFi on RTM. We've got people who are building, well, from the ground up, new implementations of Stratum and Stratum V2. Stratum V2 mining on RTM relatively soon. That's going to be one of the first places outside Bitcoin. From uh, a big supporter of ours over on Flockpool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, which is, and I mean, he's got an amazing pool from the ground up in Rust, share handling, stratum, everything re-implemented 100% in Rust, fully awesome. modular. Yeah, that is <laughs> not, not something that a lot of other places can get close to competing with, but yeah. Um, if we get back on, on track, um, Defy and what's going on with it. Um, I mean, we'll start at the, the beginning. We, we, we talked about it. I apologize for the interruption there, but, uh, but starting no, at the no, beginning, no. We, we talked about how 
this is not a new concept. It's only been something that's been popularized through a lot of marketing and a lot of the, the way that the media talks about these concepts. I think decentralized yeah. finance was, I don't even think that was like common parlance uh, when, when it, the first iteration of it came, came about. But um, no, I think it, the, the year it's, you mentioned. It's, it's a buzzword like decision cycle. Or <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So uh, it, I mean, it's, it's, it is useful though. It, it is useful as a, yeah. as a blanket category. So, I mean, and so, I mean, no, don't ever, don't, don't, yeah. Audience don't get confused. Marketing does have its place. I mean, cause now you have a bunch of stay at home moms and uh, you know, and pe members of the boardroom alike saying the same thing, right. Um, DeFi, yeah. And they, they mean, yeah, right. Putting, putting your money to work and on a decentralized or in a decentralized ecosystem. Now, whether or not they're qualified to know how decentralized it actually is or how well their money is being put to work for them, that's um, yeah. uh, something else. But but the marketing yeah. buzzwords do help, I think. Yeah, I mean, and dare I say it, I'm going to say it, FTX. <laughs> right, right, yeah. We, we have um, examples of what DeFi isn't, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, uh, but but still... Um, in many cases, DeFi in many of the income generating uh, types of DeFi requires pooling of finance and running that from a central pool or a central contract. And that's really, you, you can argue about how decentralized that really is because you've still got to trust the contract. Yeah, You've fair still enough. got to trust the pool service. You've got to trust this. Um, ideally, you take everything down on chain and just work with that. And that's yeah. where some of the older concepts come in as being fully workable. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, as far as the the sort of the the birthplace of these ideas being you know act, actually being paired with with cryptocurrencies and with decentralized networks. Uh, you'd mentioned that early on that Counterparty and then Vitalik, both like members yeah. of Counterparty and then Vitalik, they'd all had their own struggles with trying to implement concepts like this in yeah. Bitcoin Core. Yeah, the date you said um, in, in 2014 ish, maybe even earlier than that. Uh, some of it started earlier than that. Um, I believe Vitalik stuff was earlier than that. Um, initially, Op Return was only half the size it is today. Because and that's, you know, it's funny. There, sorry, sorry for the was, interjection here. I've, I've heard, I've heard with with Op Return also that there's been there's been there's been a lot of ways in which Op Return has been messed with over the years, including oh, like, yeah. ha hashes of salacious material that are that are now right, like that are now written into blocks that are that have been long yep. since forgotten. But if you look for it, you can find some pretty nasty stuff in some of those open fields. Oh, oh yeah. But I mean, um, at the same time, it's an open protocol. It's an open protocol on an open platform, and um, censorship, yay, nay, it, it, it's. Um, I mean, um, not if censorship comes, even even if we're talking about the nasty, salacious content. Not if it comes at the price of ruining it as a payment system, no. Yeah, because that's well, unfortunately what the censorship would entail. Yeah, and so for my part, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of censorship resistance versus versus immutability versus decentralization, right? Because I think that I think there is like a it, that's an important topic that that's somewhat separate. It's related, yeah. though, to your point. Yeah, I think I think maybe on on the user side, right? When it comes to whether it's wallets or other user interfaces that are built, front ends that are built to interact with this, it's not too difficult to just flag any any kind of content that's been built or, or written into these blocks and say, okay, it's very obvious we don't want it. Like users don't want to see that. Yeah, and so um, and so you can at at the user level just decide, okay, that's content that I don't want to personally interact with. So. Yeah. Take that out of my view. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there is so much filtering. And in many of the cases, you really have to go through 
a long and excruciating process to actually get to view some of this content. It, it, it's not something that the average computer user can just sit down and do. Right. I just think it's funny that it's part of that story, right? It, it is. It's part it, of it, it, it is. But, uh, but that's, that's actually even older. Uh, that predates some of this. But yeah. at the same time, it was also current in the mind of a lot of people who had these almost violent reactions to proposals from Counterparty and from Vitalik at, at the time. Yeah, well, I mean, um, consider it, was, it was fewer years then in 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 the in the past than yeah, it, the yeah, chain I mean, split it, of, it of, of Bitcoin Cash is for us today. Twenty twelve, twenty thirteen was when most of the nasty stuff was stuck in the chain. Yeah. So so yeah. Again, only only a year or two before a lot of yeah. these initial attempts at were made, were and. I mean, I do know that some of uh, the zero fee content was actually filtered out by then the only pool that would mine zero fee transactions into blocks, and that was Elegius with Luke Dash JR running it back then. But jeez, man, pour one out for for Luke. And, yeah, recently. Yeah, but I mean, I mean. It, it, it was, yeah. I think he got hit with one of those um, hardware exploits they don't want to say is out there. Yeah, I don't know that I ever read enough to, to see if, if anyone has um, has properly diagnosed what went wrong. Um, let, let's put it like this. If he hasn't been able to diagnose what went wrong, then it's one of those zero-day hardware attacks. Jeez. That have been um, going on for quite some time. Or it could have been one of the uh, drive drive buys. Yeah. yeah that, that, that one is very common because the notifications from Google don't look. Google don't have a, a spam filter for drive that's worth a damn. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if okay. your Gmail leaked in, uh, <laughs> in in a 2010 Bitcoin forum hack, tr trust me, you get a lot of interesting shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine that's got to be a high value list. But I mean, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's had for a not not too. I, I don't think most people price. would still use those accounts. Um, that's smart too, um, because they are really, really targeted. You, you get uh, stuff like random people from all over the planet sharing files with you, and <laughs> and th those are, those are not files that you really want anywhere on any of your systems. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious! So let's um, let's since we're, we've rewound yeah. a bit back to uh, close yeah. to the year 2014, Counterparty yeah. is making these proposals. Vitalik is is somewhere in there as well, not not yeah. directly with Counterparty, um, and he's I guess at that at that phase, Vitalik I think is has, he's no longer writing for Bitcoin Magazine, and he's yeah. no longer a contributor to Core. Maybe he's still submitting he, pull requests he, he, for this. He was looking to contribute to core at the time I don't, okay i don't think he officially left bitcoin core or anything like that okay got it and um i mean but certainly he's a believer in the in the mission vision and future of bitcoin he's trying to build yep. there that's his that's his idea yep um so let's talk and... a little bit about like some of the problems that that were that were creeping up in bitcoin at that time and some of the roadblocks and impediments to building something that looks like DeFi. Um, the main problem was concerns with block size. That's what it comes down to. And there was a lot of concern with um, the processing time, the extra processing time it could take on mining pools. Um, 
that was basically the main argument against it. Uh, there had also just been the whole Satoshi dice. Yeah. Um, spam, basically, but not really spam. On-chain gambling. Yeah, it seems like, though, since that time, on-chain gambling has been sort of a, a time-honored tradition. It seems like it's something that, that every chain aspires to do because of the ability to make it seem provably fair mm, in terms of reward I mean, distribution. It, it, it's, it, it's very simple and easy, really. As long as you are operating uh, a platform with transparent incoming addresses, um, there is... No reason why you can't make it fully traceable and verifiable yeah. the whole way through. Um, there are now better technologies like oracles for verifying market prices that can be integrated into the platforms and processes, um, which brings us to some of the stuff we'll be looking at <laughs> in a little bit. Um, but I mean... Um, they were concerned about data sets. And if you want to keep the, the overall block size, the one or two megabytes, then yes, it's a valid concern. And yes, I can understand there was a lot of rea uh, reluctance to allow whole ecosystems to develop and basically pump data into the Bitcoin blockchain because it was the main functional one at the time. Um, Litecoin took a more permissive approach with it, but nobody at the time had enough belief in Litecoin to really move too much over onto it, which was a shame, because it ended up stunting what could have been joint development and, and turned it into two distinct camps. Uh, with Vitalik and a lot of the people from Counterparty going off to form consensus and later launch Ethereum. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's, uh, it seems like um, in the, uh, that, that seems to be the, the greatest source, though, of new innovation in any kind of a market or vertical is just dissatisfaction with the, the old guard. Right. Like in when it comes to yep. like fitness camps and, and like we'll just use it as a bad example, but relevant. The uh, the CrossFit gym ecosystem. Right. Every time that you get a CrossFit gym that, we, you know, where the, the owner is, an, is a jerk or something or where the programming isn't the way that you use the people there like it, then all of a sudden yep. you've got two CrossFit gyms and on the same block. Somebody opens up another one because they say, well, you know, the owner isn't a jerk or or somehow yep. it's, it's easier to, yeah, to deal with the, the day to day classes yep. that are offered there same with churches too right you find yep. a you find a protestant minister or some sort of like uh some sort of like non-denominational christian church where the pastor offended somebody all of a sudden you got two on the same block um so that's not too big a, a shock right that <laughs> yeah i mean no no it's, permissionless it's systems not, it, it, it's not but when you're talking about people who are generally speaking as smart as the people leading the development processes in the space you would kind of expect maybe a little bit better yeah but i think that even being in working in the open source space though doesn't get rid of uh of politics and it doesn't get rid of ah, no, pride no, right true, like, true. Yeah, poli yeah politics and pride seem to follow anywhere that there's humor endeavor human endeavor so yeah. when you find yeah. people who are you know who, who feel like they're well positioned they will they will watch after the gate they will make sure that that they uh, maintain their position and if if in their minds they're king of the hill then great then they're king of the hill then you know never mind the fact that somebody else is trying to make a larger hill right uh, or trying to yeah. whatever trying to yeah whatever analogy you want to use create trying to add the size a, of the, try, trying to add a moat to the hill so it's safer or right yeah or or uh, another analogy yeah. of, if it's a if it's a pie that you, yeah. you think that you own a large slice of they're trying to increase the size of the pie so your yeah. slice at least remains the same if does if not increases yeah. and when looking at these systems total value locked that wasn't necessary that wasn't even a concept that anybody i think had fully yeah thought through the, at that the, time that was nobody was talking about that they were looking at the bitcoin price 
uh, at spot on Mount Cox. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's so many things wrong with that now. In retrospect, so many <laughs> things wrong with that with that mindset now. Uh, um, um, no, but I mean, it was it it was what it was back then. It was growing. It was new. It was growing. Um, and it's still new and growing, but it, it's getting close to becoming a bratty teenager or maybe that whole five to six year old boy's anal stage of development. I'm not quite sure. I think it might be that one. Like, My dad yeah. can beat up your dad. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That sounds about right. But I mean, you think of other large technology movements, though, and and that many years into, uh, you know, in, into a similar number of users adopting, say, personal computers, we were nowhere yeah. close to where we are now. At that at that time, yeah. right? It was yeah. we couldn't have yeah. imagined having handheld devices that had, you know, several orders of magnitude more processing power and ability. Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember <laughs> driving a combine and reading William Gibson at the same time. Uh, a wow. massive. Well, at the time, massive uh, twenty-four foot combine, and you really don't need to do much driving one of those. So you could sort of glance up and down. Yeah, okay, I'm still going straight. Mm, read half page. <laughs> yeah, still going straight. Yeah, if you're nowhere, if you're nowhere near the aqueduct, also, yeah, you've got a lot of room to make mistakes too. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not going straight, just, yeah. just don't, and don't, I mean, don't and I mean, don't tip her into the water, and you're fine. The mobile I had with me on that combine weighed 20 plus kilos and lugging it up and in there so I Jeez. could call and yell at people when nobody was there to, for me to unload grain into. It, it <laughs> was, it, it, it really, that and going to dicks and jacking in and, yep, I want that. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yep. Rather than lugging this big heavy thing up and down. Jeez. But anyway, yeah. Um, c coming back to it, I mean, um, they went up and spun up Ethereum. Um, and I mean, Ethereum was not a bad concept. Uh, I like a lot of the things they're doing. I do not like the EVM and Solidity. And I think basically the whole Web3 and DeFi space have validated that Solidity has been uh, a technical failure. Uh, the amount of hacks, the amount of problems with it. Yes, it's a brand new language being developed. Um, you, you can Either you can make an argument that Solidity has failed as a product, or you can make the argument that a lot of people have been incredibly irresponsible putting a lot of money into a beta or alpha alpha slash beta product. It, it, it's sort of either one or the other. Whereas some of these early concepts from Counterparty and from how Vitalik had some of the first things structured for his contract proposals for op return, they're a lot more secure. Well, let's talk about the, the, that a little of the, the opportunities there that uh, that the road not taken. So, as far as yeah. it being more secure, let's talk about um, let's talk about the, at the understanding of a layperson. Why is it more secure to to have the basis of DeFi live in the op return and the op check sig multi sig fields of Bitcoin versus um, any other current implementation? Op check sig multi sig was directly spam. Counterparty only used that because they didn't get the 80 bytes of op return they were promised. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it, it, it's you can do a lot of transactions on chain where you can tag on something like, um, let, let, let's take a look at this. Uh, we're building for RTM. Um, Let's see here if I can get yeah. that to pop up. So I think I think you've got that you've got that page shared. Let me uh this guy right here, yes? Yep. Yeah, correct. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, no. 
Here we go. Is that showing? Okay. So we've got a whole bunch of markets here. Ah, uh, no, hold on. I mean, uh, hold on a sec. How do okay, I yes, see, this? Ah, to... good. Here we are. Now I'm okay. now I'm actually in there. Got it. So, okay. Um, I've got a bunch of markets in here. Um, we've got, for example, yeah, let's pick ETH USD. What I can then do, this is all brand new. It literally started caching data for for charting and stuff like that. 25 minutes ago, so not all of the charts are live and look nice yet. Um, what you can then do is very simply choose a call or a put, bid direction. You can choose a timeout. Let's say I want to, I think ETH in 10 minutes, it's going to go up take my deposit address. This is a testnet RTM wallet. Oh, oops, you can't see that, can you? Um, yeah, I know, I know that you're in a restrictive, uh, restrictive environment for sharing a screen. Um, I can actually share this. Can I add a second? Uh, can I add a second? I don't know. You might be able to. Uh, no, it says it only says stop screen. Mm. Okay. Um, you can start with a different one and then and then share. Um, let's see if we can do. So yeah. So, I've got my market here. Bid time at 10 minutes. I believe ETH is going to go up in 10 minutes. I've got a deposit address, which I've now copied. I've got a time lock value, 600, because it matches my 10 minutes in seconds. And now... Um, in my can I ah oh no I can't get that directly because it's not a tab uh, bugger um not to worry yeah I think I where, think where is here. my I can, I can do my entire screen here yeah um, it, it's best if you have a secondary monitor. I've I've got the entire screen here. Okay. And testnet RTM wallet. That's the address I need to send it to. It needs to be a future send. Six hundred seconds. And what do I want a bit? How large an option do I want to take out? I'll go 50,000. And because this is a testnet wallet, I've done something you must never, ever, ever do. <laughs> I have unlocked it. So it should now be ready to send. Poof. It's headed out there. And in an hour, I will get a payment if the price of ETH goes up 10 minutes from now. Wow. And all of that is living on chain then? The, the, um... That's living on chain, no accounts, no... And the, the most beautiful thing about this right now is the counterparty on that site 
because I'm using an RTM time lock on it, they can't even run away with it ahead of time. Hmm. Sure, they might not pay me out, but if we start talking about longer duration options, longer duration hedges than just 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if I'm uncertain about where crypto is going to be a week from now, then um, me having my coins locked, them not being able to run away with them, that adds a great deal of peace of mind. Also, the fact that I don't need to have an account and it's transparent, it's all on chain. Here, I was speculating on the RTM price earlier. So you can see this was Ah, uh, it doesn't have the cent address in there. I need to show the full thing for that. Um, but uh, you can see here, I was paid back to that address an hour later. The sending address. Very nice. simply, uh, without having to do anything. Completely like the old style Satoshi dice. All <laughs> on chain. No smart contracts needed. There are no points to attack. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's no. There's no account. There is basically nothing to rug. Jeez. Um. Yeah. So. So you're as secure it, as your as your uh, wallet management then, essentially. Yeah. As, yeah. yeah. It was secure as a wallet, man wallet management, and it's not, um, for example, a wallet in a browser that has to call somebody else's <laughs> infrastructure. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm really not a big fan of the whole move towards hot wallets or DeFi. I mean, yeah. on Mind Your Biz community, if you're watching and you're thinking like, hey, should I, should I basically only work with Harbor wallets? And for my, my take, yes. And yeah. David, I think what you're building right now, this this beta, this or this early alpha on yeah. on this market, I think it kind of validates that that if you can just work yeah. with hardware wallets, um, unless yeah, it is a custom just, wallet, just just a core wallet um, for BTC. There's nothing stopping somebody building something similar for BTC. Uh, I believe Trezor already supports including op return messages. Wow. Which is is great. It's so it's so funny that Trezor is they're they're pretty good at a lot of things with Bitcoin. Yeah. There's one or two things where they're like where you know they were well, they're happy yeah. to step towards take some steps towards censorship. Um, so sometimes they're a little over eager to please certain sides of the community, but yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, they um they, they really do have their poop in a group, so to speak. Yeah, and I mean, um, this is what the side project are building. Got it. Um, That's, and um, this is entirely this, powered this is, by the Raptorium ecosystem then. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to get into a further evolution where basically these options, where you can sort of burn them into an escrow eventually. And then you will also be able to trade them if there's anybody looking to buy. Wow. So it doesn't have to be the house counterparty you you trade against. It could be other users, and uh, the platform then just gets whatever small fee it gets from it. That is uh, that's surreal, and I love seeing something like that. Where, like you're saying, it's uh, it's some of these original ideas, like where the user experience is similar to something like Satoshi Dice. And then, you know, you don't have the KYB, you don't have the KYC. Um, yeah. And I mean, some would argue that it, it, it brings up the problem that you mentioned. You, you geofence off the US, you geofence off the EU, and then you let the rest of the world enjoy itself. But since I, it's on chain, if somebody does know how to use a VPN... Um... <laughs> That's, isn't that crazy how the internet works? How it's, it yeah. doesn't, doesn't seem to care about, yeah, geographical boundaries. Weird. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And when there's nothing logged, um, not even IPs, it's just what goes on on chain. 
So there you go. Um, I mean, and that'll be a question I think of the, anybody who's hosting a front end for a similar type of uh, similar type of service. I mean, I think for the community, something to, to watch out for is that if you're not using some kind of a, uh, an ad block like uBlock, uh, uBlock Origin, or or yeah. bare minimum the uh, the Brave Brave's implementation on Brave browser of uBlock Origin, then you're going to have a harder time detecting whether or not there's any kind of data collection on s similar sites that may pop up after they see that this is possible. Yeah. So yeah. this is innovation that I know will, will re it inevitably result in imitation. Somebody somewhere is going to watch this and say, oh, that's a really good idea. I'm going to borrow that and uh, and be a little more yeah. evil with it than, than you've been. Yeah, so, but I mean, um, we've got some things coming up for this that uh, they're welcome to copy if they can figure out the logic for it. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, great. Okay, well, let's talk... Let's talk a little bit. We got it. We've got a few minutes. I think we were, yep. we were, our target for this, this show was going to be about 45. Let's, um, let's yep. do this. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, some other like current problems with the current iterations of DeFi. And then, I mean, you've shown a milestone here that is part that's, that's powered by the Raptorium ecosystem. It yep. looks great. What are some upcoming roadmap items and um, yeah, some things to look forward to? I mean, for RTM assets is the big one. That's always been the big one, um, and especially in relation to this, because what we're introducing is uh, transaction automation at the transaction level. We're introducing transaction types where as long as the sending address is funded, it will automatically, every number of blocks or every amount of time, send out whatever it may be, assets or RTM or similar to holders, which means there's no longer any need for a vesting contract. Vesting wow. contracts is something that people love to rug with on <laughs> DeFi. Um, no, but it, it has been. Uh, might as well be honest about it. Um, look at basic yeah. scam chain. <laughs> and yeah, I just called it that, but um, a, a lot of the tokens launched on there, all of a sudden, um, um, our founder's wallet got hacked, or um, our founder's wallet was, oh, there was a problem with the vesting contract, and it paid out everything. Um, and when it's just sitting there in a transparent address, there is an automated transaction that will, every X amount of time, send out whatever. And that's already been sent, and it's been signed. It's on chain. You can see it. That's great. There's there's nothing to attack then, Un unless you want to mess with the whole network itself, which involves <laughs> an awful lot of hash, and attacking the the nodes that sign transactions into blocks and sign blocks onto the network, which, which is. Uh, significantly more secure it, it's not going to scale in the same way as Solana is of course not uh, but we will get up somewhere once we have transactions decoupled running on their own parachains one each for assets one for time locked transactions one for probably also regular transactions so the only thing that happens on the main blockchain is the mining of blocks the payment of nodes, the distribution of coins to minor wallets, but then regular transactions, all of that going back and forth, that exclusively happens on uh, one of the parachains that then notarizes itself onto the main chain. That's phenomenal. Yeah, having the, having the L1 essentially be for Coinbase transactions. Yeah. That's um, great. But it's... <laughs> it, 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 it's it's a new, it's a different way of doing things from what's been tried so far, but I believe that we can get quite far with this. It's going to take a while to get it implemented. Um, we are participating now in something that may seem like it's almost the opposite of what we are with 
proof of work and high security and stuff like that. We, uh, we're participating in an initiative led by the advisor from the Trondal, Laurent Pelot, um, a, a French guy called Web3, Stronger Together, um, because basically we want to get out and talk to people and see what other people are doing and um, invite some of those people in to come and build on the RTM platform. Once we have assets, we can do an awful lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Well, especially with the way that you, you're architecting an entire ecosystem to support those assets. That's been one of the main criticisms that I think um, that I, th I think you're aware of that I, that I have of uh, of projects that launched with a Satoshi like consensus. I'm not going to name names, but a Satoshi like consensus, similar architecture, maybe just forked from Bitcoin and then only ever roadmapped having assets launched but no additional ecosystem to use those yeah. assets in any meaningful way. Yeah, but I mean, sounds if, like you, if, you, if you don't have some usage in, what, what's the point? I mean, we, right. we, are, we are looking to, once we get to the point of having contracts developed for RTM, um, once that's there, we're also going to start looking at implementing some forms of privacy. We're probably going to go with Lelantis and Spark from uh, what Firo are working on. It looks very promising. It looks relatively easy to include. It looks good because it will work effectively even in, uh, what do you call it, uh, a op privacy optional setting. Yeah, Bec which it seems like uh, based on some of the uses you'd met laid out before, that's a requirement. Yeah, and I mean, especially for something like, for example, um, NFTs, giving them a bit more of a use case. Uh, think about stuff like birth certificates, uh, these certificates, that certificates. You don't want those out in public, transparently on the chain. That should, at minimum, require an extra view key to be able to have a look at but at the same time, once you've got the view key, you can verify where it came from. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I mean, uh, that's that, that's how we get more usage in. We're, we're not going to, while the economy is the way it is, we're not going to get a lot of people who are going to jump on board with the newest, latest payment system. Yeah, uh, I, I think I, th I think that's pie in the sky. Um, oh, 100%. Not unless you're offering uh, helicopter freebies at, at scale, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, what does make sense is for us to go out and offer some nice NFTs that come with some nice QR tick a small business can use. Um, they use the QR code or the barcode or whichever type of code they want on their product, label it, somebody scans it with a phone, standard browser will just take you straight to a nice explorer where you've got this NFT or whatever it is you've chosen, music NFT, video, or just traceability information on the product if that's important and relevant. Um, that, that's something you can get people to try. People are happy to market when the markets are bad. Yeah, yeah. Because you, 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 you've got to fight for more for your current market share. You've got to work on gaining new market share. New market share during a bear market, a bear cycle, equals real money. <laughs> and it goes up again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as long as, as long as the project continues to iterate and put in work, I think I need to, I need to call it a show at that point and, uh, yeah. and just say, there's a reason, uh, David, that you're always welcome back to mind your biz. And that is because of the amount of resolve that you show in terms of solving problems when nobody else is looking at them, when no one else is paying attention or maybe nobody else is still working or excited about them. So appreciate you. Yeah talking through some of the problem domain here with DeFi and some of the things that Raptorium is working on. Um, yeah. Can I ask for the benefit of the Mind Your Biz audience, what are the best yeah. links or places for them to learn more about 
about what you're working on? Uh, the Discord, really. The, the Discord server, um, our, uh, our blog as well uh, on the back end of the site. Um, we've got a weekly stream going out now. Uh, where we give updates, and we've got uh, Crypto Smith, who is doing all kinds of fancy new stuff with NFTs. Um, he's creating MMORPG-style weaponry um, and uh, armor as well now. We've just had a helmet come in from... Um, a top Czech armorer. It's now going off to Canada and it's going to be laser scanned and end up as actual game NFTs and game items. Nice. Well, that's awesome. So it sounds like yeah. then, so Discord and the blog. And uh, of course, I think there there's uh, a main Raptorium Twitter as well, right? I know that you yeah. and Charlie are on Twitter anyhow. Yeah main raptorium twitter and it's roughly oh goodness what is it in in about four hours from now um there's a weekly stream starting but four hours from now is 6 a.m on sundays at gmt plus eight yeah <laughs> which it. is 6, 6 p.m est i think yeah. Got it. That's a good time. That's really a really good time for most people on the East Coast. So appreciate that. I think by the time that that uh, this video is published as well, the the Mind Your Biz community will be able to see something of a backlog of that stream. Um, that's yeah. is that going to YouTube, Twitch? Yeah, but, Where's uh, that, that? That goes out on YouTube. Okay. Um, Great. Yeah. Okay. And awesome. I mean, and, well, and I mean we're live there every. Well, yeah. Saturday slash Sunday. Got it. Depending Sunday. on where you are in the world. <laughs> yeah. Depending on where you are in the world, then it's, it's yeah, one, once a week on the weekend at some time. Yeah. Well, yeah. David, I appreciate your time. Um, uh, thank you so much thanks, for, for sharing for more about me it. On. Yeah, always a pleasure. And uh, I can't wait to see more of this going out of beta into yeah, into yeah. um into um, its uh, main it's, release candidate. It, it's going to enter a public Sta uh, testnet stage on the testnet very soon i think probably just ahead of east denver phenomenal phenomenal okay well can't yep. wait to see that david thank you again so much for your yep. time yep thank you um...